Hi, you're at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we're looking underneath the hood of one of the most iconic cars ever in the muscle car world, the 1970 SS Chevelle, a real SS car. We do have the build sheet for this particular car. We're going to go over the engine with, uh, with you in a moment here. It is a numbers correct engine, day code correct engine, not a restamp. This is the engine that this car was born with in 1970. It does have a different intake and carburetor on it. It has a vacuum Holley carburetor on it. It has a short port uh, Edelbrock aluminum intake manifold as opposed to the cast iron one uh, that it left uh, the factory with. But those are both upgrades. If someone wished they could put it back to its original configuration, this is a much better updated uh, fuel system on it as opposed to the quadrajet and cast iron manifold that it came with. Uh, it has a set of um, nice long tube headers on it. it. does have power steering. It has power brakes. Uh, the engine has absolutely no oil leaks whatsoever in it. It has the original um, chrome air cleaner that it would have left the factory with. This has the hump hood on it. Uh, also a column induction type hood, you see. Uh, so it may or may not have come from the factory with a column induction air cleaner. You could get it either way, but um, this particular one does have a chrome air cleaner on it, unsilenced. Big four pass, heavy duty radiator that the car was released with. The down tube from the um, uh, overflow on the radiator, instead of being dumped onto the ground like they were from the factory, this one has an auxiliary bottle attached here to catch that overflow. Uh, if, in fact, if there was any. You can see there are all new hoses on this vehicle, uh, all new belts. The plug wires are a new set of uh, silicone uh, cell wires, which are an update from the uh, uh, factory wires that came on the vehicle. Uh, everything under this hood is just as nice and fresh as could possibly be. It's never been bumped anywhere. It has the original radiator core support in it. Uh, inner fender panels are nice and fresh looking yet. They're, they've never been off the car. Nothing's been taken off of this at any point in time. It's a really nice, straight, original car. It also left the factory with factory air conditioning. Everything underneath the hood is gone. They took it off, probably was in a, in a uh, cooler climate. They didn't need it. They did, however, leave the uh, uh, box, the evaporator, and all the lines underneath the dashboard. So if someone wanted to go ahead and retrofit this thing with the original uh, air conditioning system, it would, it would it mean that you'd have to buy a compressor, the bracketry, a condenser for the front, and the associated lines, but it could be put back to an air conditioning car if someone chose to do so. We're going to leave it the way it is. We're not doing it. Uh, the person that had the car removed them just for aesthetic reasons. I'm sure you know it doesn't look as cluttered up. It's a great looking engine compartment in a great year and a great vintage car. Let's walk around and see what we can find. Hi, uh, you are at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we are looking at a 1970 396 SS Chevelle, the real deal, the correct color, the way the car left the factory. We just went over the engine compartment with you. And this is the real deal. It's not a clone. It's not an engine that had a transplant in it. It's the real deal, the way it left the factory, with the original build sheet from General Motors on the car. Paint fit finish on this car is absolutely exemplary. Um, everything's been cleared over. The stripes have been painted on and then cleared after that. So. Everything is smooth and nice as can be. There are no edges, no lines anywhere. Does have a column induction hood on it with a functional column induction flap. Uh, it does have the round uh, chrome air cleaner on it as opposed to the column induction air cleaner, which he hides half the motor, but that's the way this person chose to do it. The fit of the hood to the uh, fenders is really, really nice. I mean, it, it just literally fits. It fits everywhere. Clean up to the uh, uh, windshield. The same gap on both sides, no overhang, nice fit in the front, both sides. Great looking car. The grill's nice, no pieces of plastic broken or chipped off or anything. The SS designation and the chrome on it is just as fresh and nice as you'd ever want. Filler panel is nice. The bumper fitment is absolutely beautiful. You'd need a micrometer to find a, a, 
uh, deviation in this front bumper. It's absolutely beautiful. Of course, the chrome on it is just, it's a foot deep. The front lenses are clear plastic the way they should be. <clears throat> no milkiness to them whatsoever. The uh, basils around the uh, headlights, just absolutely beautiful. You know, really, really a, a nice, nice front end on this car. I can't find a single thing that I could uh, tell you a negative one. It has the correct uh, factory style type hood pins on the car also. It's a great front end on the car. I can't find a single thing that I could say a negative about on the front end of this car. Paint-wise, fit, finish, chrome, everything is just jumping out at me. Let's see what's on the driver's side. Okay, driver's side of our SS, real SS, Chevelle, 1970. You can see the paint, the fit on this thing is just, I, I can't over describe how nice this car actually is. Um, side marker light is absolutely beautiful. No marks on the uh, wheel lips. SS396 designation on the side because that's what it is, for real. Uh, it has the Kelsey Hay style. Uh, Chevy called them uh, SS wheels. Ford called them Magnums. Chrysler called them Rogue wheels. But they were all made by Kelsey Hayes, and it's the same basic wheel. But that is a super uh, SS wheel for this vehicle. That's what it came with on the sheet. Trim around the window. Really, really nice on this car. You can't see that they're tucked under the uh, cowl area here, but it does have the original arms and wiper blades on the vehicle. And they're just as new. They're tucked under there, but they are there and they do function. Uh, really nice looking car. Front fender, the door, the rocker panel. You're not going to get any better than the fitment that that one has. Uh, original uh, remote control mirror. The chrome is very nice on that. It's not pitted up or marked up. or There's no patina or anything that I can see on this mirror. It's absolutely beautiful. The wipes, fuzzies, wipe, whatever you want to call them, uh, around the uh, windows, both front and back, have been replaced, and they are absolutely as new. The rubber piece that goes to the chrome that the, uh, fits it to the door is nice and fresh and pliable. Um, Drip edge, absolutely no dings, marks, nothing anywhere. The roof, of course, I mean, it's just absolutely straight as an arrow. There's no dings or marks or scratches or deviations or absolutely nothing on it. I don't see a single thing that's wrong with it. Um, <clears throat> quarter panel to door. Handle and lock. The chrome on that is just absolutely beautiful. Wow, this fit is really great on this car. It really is. The door to the quarter panel, absolutely no deviation whatsoever. Wheel lip molding, again, no dents, no marks. You can fill the uh, uh, panels where they go together yet. It's all tin. There's no Bondo or anything anywhere in it. Um, BFG tires, of course, on the uh, Kelsey wheels that are on it. Uh, correct trim rings and centers for this car also, the SS centers. Back window, the trim around it. Just like the front, there's absolutely nothing. There's no issues whatsoever. None. Quarter panel, overhang of the quarter panel, you can feel the tin edge on it. Side marker right in the back, just as nice as you'd want it to fit. Again, check this bumper fitment out on this car. It's just absolutely beautiful the way they did the bumpers on this car. Driver's side of this car, I've gone over, you washed me with my hands. I, I didn't find one mark, not one scratch. Uh, no chips. Um, uh, there's absolutely nothing to report on the side of this car. It's as straight as you'd ever want to see. The body lines line up absolutely flawlessly. Uh, driver's side of this car is as nice as you will ever find on any car. You will not find a nicer one. Let's see what's on the back. Okay, around the uh, back end of our RF70 Chevelle, you can see the rear deck fits just the way the hood does too. I mean, the gaps and, and fitment of this vehicle is just exemplary. It really is. New keyhole, uh, new lock assembly in the back. Again, it's all clear. No edges on the uh, striping whatsoever. Uh, there's absolutely no flaws in the paint. I, I don't, even looking across it sideways, I don't see any, uh, any issues whatsoever anywhere with the paint. Uh, Chevelle by Chevrolet, of course. 
uh, and, and it's you know, there's no uh, pinning or anything in it. Again, look at this bumper fitment on this car. Look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, rubber across the back with the SS uh, uh, badge on it, uh, just as new as could possibly be. Tail lights, nice and clean and clear. The uh, plastic basils around them, the uh, argent finish is just nice and fresh looking. Correct style for 1970 uh, exhaust tips on this vehicle also. Pan underneath the rear volants. Um, there's no pulls or anything on it. There's no dents or anything where you can see someone caught something on it and pulled it. This is just as flawless as you could find one. Really nice back end on this part. And again, both tail lights are just as they were when they were new. This thing's as nice as Chevelle as I think we've ever seen. Let's take a look at the other side. Okay, passenger side of our 70 Chevelle. Again, the side marker light, you can see it's just as beautiful. I love this fitment of these bumpers. It's very rare that you find things that fit as well as they are on this vehicle. Quarter panel, same as the other one. Wheel lip molding, same as the other two, no marks. Half shelf is nice and fresh. It's been replaced probably just due to age. Uh, it, it, it would have been sun faded and kind of funkied up a little bit, but this one is new and it, it's great. It's got the speaker holes in it uh, for your, your speaker vents. Uh, the rear glass, there's something on the rear glass here. I have no idea what it is. It, uh, it's a marking in the, the right corner of the very top. You can't see it. You probably won't see it in the video. I know you won't. It's not it's minuscule enough where it's not going to show up. But there is something like on the glass here. Whether it will come off or not, I really don't know. We'll find out shortly, though, because we're going to try to get it off. Uh, quarter panel the rest of the way. To the door again. Unbelievable the fitment of this, uh, this car. This handle is the same as the other one. Of course, our wipes are all new front front ones and the rear ones. Uh, wow, this drip rail molding is flawless. There's not a mark and a deviation, anything that I can really see on it. It's as nice as it would ever, ever find one. Roof, again, you know, I, there's nothing on the roof at all. No matter how you pan across it, uh, you don't see a deviation, uh, uh, fluctuation in reflection or anything. It's as nice as you could ever find. Paint on the door. Down to the rocker panel again. Boy, is that nice. There's absolutely nothing. No dents, no marks, no chips. I can't find a single thing. Wow, look at this. You cannot feel the difference from the door to the fender. They're just absolutely as straight as could possibly be. 396 SS again. Uh, back up on the front end where we started again. Again, wheel lip molding, not a single mark, not even a little tiny door dent from anything. Side marker light again in the front, bumper fitment in the front, everything is as nice as you could possibly find on this. I cannot find, you just watched me go over this entire vehicle with my hands. I mean, I don't think there's a couple inches on this car that I missed putting my hands over, rubbing them over. I didn't find a dent, a mark, a chip, uh, imperfection in the paint. Um, fitment of the panels, I couldn't find anything on the car and you just watched me go over the entire vehicle. We're not going to misrepresent something to you. If you want something more defined, we'll be glad to get you a photograph of it or a video of it. Uh, at this point, what we just did, we circumnavigated this thing and there is nothing that I can tell you a negative on in this car. Absolutely nothing. There's not even a mark or a chip on any of the uh, uh, trim rings on the uh, wheels on this car. The, the, the car is just as nice a 1970 SS, real SS, Chevelle with a build sheet that you'll ever, ever find. And it's available here at Hangsters and we're going to do an interior show now and you're going to see what it's like inside this car. It's fantastic. Okay, we're in our 1970 Chevelle SS396 car. Headliner. Just as nice and fresh as could possibly be. It's been replaced. Sun visors appear to be the original sun visors yet, and they're still in excellent condition. These are the original headrests. 
If you get aftermarket ones, they have a sewn seam here. These are still the uh, uh, melted seam uh, that, that was uh, uh, used in 1970 on these vehicles. Hat rack in the back, as nice as can be. The front seats, the back seats are the correct material that they used uh, with the correct emblem on them. Uh, everything matches flawlessly. Center console with the staple shifter, all the chrome is really nice. Nothing is, uh, nothing is uh, uh, deteriorated on it whatsoever. Working glove box, it locks. Uh, this particular car did have air conditioning, so the air conditioning uh, uh, function uh, switch is still intact in the car. AM radio that it would have come with. The vents are still all intact for the air conditioning also. Full instrumentation on this car. Tachometer, speedometer. How about a working clock? Uh, amp gauge, fuel gauge, temp gauge, SS steering wheel. How about a tilt SS steering wheel? When was the last time you saw a 70 with a factory SS tilt steering wheel? No cracks in it either, by the way. Most of these things from age, the uh, uh, plastic shrinks and, and deteriorates and, and cracks and you have separation. None. Zero. Mirror is nice and clean and it is the original mirror with the uh, uh, original light in it yet. <laughs> the lights are all working in this car. Both kick panel lights are working. The dome light is functioning in the car. Remote control mirror on the driver's door. SS designation. All the chrome on the driver's door. All the trim is just as it was when it was new. Um, original handles, you can see that the uh, yellow on them, uh, that uh, indicates that they are the original ones. They're snow white clear uh, whenever they're brand new, and the older they get, the more yellow they get. And this one, that one's been replaced in the right rear. That's original, that's original, that guy's original. Um, the car is as nice as you'll ever find one. Carpeting is as new, so it probably is new carpeting. The dash pad has no breaks or cracks or anything whatsoever in it. I don't see a single thing on the interior of this car that uh, uh, would, would even make you think not to buy it. Even the uh, the, the brake pedal and the uh, gas pedal, parking brake pedal, or pedal are still fresh. How about three sets of keys? This guy was so serious he even had an SS uh, moniker uh, tag for his... Uh, his key fob is an SS key fob. 1970, best year you could ever get a Chevelle. Everything in this car is like new. You've watched me go over the entire car with my hands. I don't think there's a piece of it I haven't touched. And the interior is no exception to the outside. It, it's just as nice as uh, the outside represents itself. This car is an absolute fantastic vehicle and it runs and drives just as it looks. And like I said, we do have the paperwork for this vehicle. It's going to go up on our Hangsters website. Uh, you definitely have to take a look at this car if you're in the market for a 70 collectible Chevelle SS car. This is one that you definitely need to take a look at. Here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. The wipers are working. It's not raining, but they're still working. Turn signal left, functions. Turn signal right, functions. Tachometer's working, speedometer's working. We don't know about temperature yet, we just pulled out. This car is as nice and straight a car as you'd ever want to find, I do know that. It's just an exemplary uh, car. Shifts are nice and firm. Real nice sound to it. Wow, really a great car. Let's see if we straighten it out here a little bit. I try to go straight around turns. Okay, no hands on the steering wheel. And we're going down the road straight as an arrow. Absolutely no fluctuation whatsoever. Let's try putting the brakes on with the no hands on the wheel, see what happens. Straight as an arrow. Absolutely no pull whatsoever left or right. No hands on the wheel. drives just like it should. No shakes, shimmies, squeaks, rattles, nothing. Nada. I can't believe that clock still works. The boat mirror works like it should. I don't know. Real nice tight steering on the car.
Nice rumble and it's got a nice little camera. That was nice. Good running car. Everything lines up. See, it runs and drives and performs as it should. Again, no hands on the steering wheel. Okay, we're underneath our 1970 SS396 Chevelle. A real car. Not a clone, a real car. With the build sheet. Front end, everything is nice and fresh looking in it. Uh, it does have a heavy duty sway bar front and rear, which you'll see when we do the back part of this. F41 suspension, which shows on the sheet, the build sheet also. Disc brakes in the front. Rotors are nice and thick on it. The calipers are nice, uh, nice and fresh, not all scaled up or anything. Uh, the motor's been out and freshened up in it. It's got a little bit of a cam. It is a numbers correct, absolute motor that came with this car in 1970. There's no shield on the. Uh, a bell housing area for the flywheel and the uh, torque converter. A lot of these ca cars in the south, people leave them off just so they dissipate some of that heat from the uh, oil in this converter. Uh, the cooling lines do somewhat of a job doing it, but this helps out tremendously to leave that uh, shield off. And since we're not driving it in uh, New York State in the wintertime in the salt, so you know there's no reason to have it on here. Uh, no issue at all is being off. Frame structure in the front, down the sides is really really nice on the car it's actually all original so are the floor pans I don't see any uh, place where they've been disrupted through the years uh, the frame uh, section it's a perimeter frame the entire perimeter frame on this vehicle C channel on the sides box the front C channel on the sides uh, no leaks in the uh, transmission or the uh, engine as you can see also or the tail shaft everything on this car is as dry as the bone under here uh, everything appears to have been taken out and redone, freshened up, and put back in. Set of long tube headers on it, uh, going into two and a half inch uh, pipes, which are also new. Uh, the cross member in the back is uh, new with the uh, transmission mount, appears to be in a replacement mount also. A couple of, a little bit of a curve here and on this side where through the years, you know, obviously this car has been jacked up more than once. Uh, someone put a floor jack there and lifted it up and it gave it a little tiny bit of a curvature the inside uh, uh, roll of the uh, the frame. Could be straightened out, there's really no reason to. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, compromising the uh, structural integrity of this vehicle in any way. Absolutely not. Again, no leaks in the tail shaft area. Uh, U-joints in the drive shaft appear to be fairly fresh. Floor pans, uh, the structural supports in the uh, floor pans are still all intact. You can see the uh, uh, spot welds on them, both sides, functional parking brake cable, the original one also, and it appears to be just fine. There's no issues with it. Original brake lines on the car, you know, really a nice, uh, uh, they're not bent or distorted in any way. Brake lines are real nice on this vehicle. Uh, again, back to the floors, there's no uh, places where someone has jacked the thing up on the floor pans inadvertently instead of using the sides of the frame, which you can see they did have it in the front, a little tiny bit of a curvature where they jacked it up. Also, we have a matching set in the rear where there's a little tiny bit of a curve where someone has put jack stands or used a floor jack through the years. Uh, again, structural supports, uh, nothing compromised in any way. There's no marks on them, no bends in the floor pans. Everything in this car appears to be 100% original. I don't see anything that's been uh, messed with in any way. Also, this does have a H-pipe uh, on it. Gives you a little bit more uh, mid-range torque, a lot more uh, top-end horsepower. Um, engineered by Chrysler, by the way. But um, very, very nice car underneath. Really great-looking uh, vehicle so far. We're halfway through it. Let's see what's in the other half. Okay, we're on the second half of our uh, 70 Chevelle SS car. 
Again, uh, the structural supports in the uh, floor pans that uh, transverse over the uh, uh, pipes and uh, the uh, two brand spanking new Flowmaster mufflers. I mean, absolutely brand new yet. Paint's not even burned off of them. That support is just as nice and fresh as you'd ever want to see one. The uh, uh, floor pan in behind the seats the same way. The structural supports up above the uh, rear differential, absolutely the same way, totally undisrupted. Springs in the front look nice and strong yet and fresh. The back one's the same way. This in the front, fin drums in the rear. Again, our F41 uh, sway bar. Also, to, to authenticate the uh, SS car, it does have the boxed in swing arms instead of just the open channel. The SS cars came with the uh, boxed in section to give it more rigidity for uh, a torsional twist because of the amount of power being applied to the uh, uh, rear tires and wheels. Uh, new shocks in the back appear to be a helper spring type setup. Uh, original gas tank. Frame sections in the back are just as nice as the frame sections in the front. No jack marks or marks on them in any way that I can see. Um, 12 bolt Chevy rear, heavy duty uh, rear end in this particular vehicle. Floor pans in the back appear to be really nice and original. The drop downs in the quarter panels the same way. I, I don't really see anything underneath this car that's uh, uh, an issue. The pan that goes across the back <coughs> from the frame structure, the, the two main uh, frame rails in the back has a transverse section of frame uh, in the back also and it looks to be good too. There's nothing pulled or, or, or completely out of line in it. Um, correct exhaust tips on it. It sounds like, you know, a lot of these uh, videos that I'm doing, I'm very, very repetitive about, um, you know, this is right, this is right, this is right. But occasionally we find marks and we find an issue, just like I pointed out the sections of the frame there, which, which again, you know, it's not detracting from uh, any of the uh, uh, pluses of this vehicle. Uh, but there are a couple marks there that where through the years it was picked up by a jack and it, it just kind of did distort that frame a little tiny bit. Again, nothing structurally uh, uh, compromised in any way. But it does sound repetitive, but the reason it does is because every car that we get, we really try our very best to get the best of the best that we can sell to you. Uh, we're not going to get a car that's a, 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 an issue car, that we have rust on it or corrosion or a bent frame or any kind of a title issue. We completely stay away from those vehicles. So whenever we do get a vehicle, we go over it prior to us doing a video shoot on the vehicle. Now during that shoot we may pick up some imperfections here or there or a couple things that don't work or a hood that may need adjusted or a muffler clamp or whatever underneath uh, that may need addressed. That's why we do these video shoots for your, you know, your uh, uh, information to see what the car actually is but also for ours that so we can see okay we missed this somehow we have to go back and readdress that. So it's repetitive only in the fact that every car that we get, we try to make sure that it's the highest quality car. That's why in every case we try to make sure that you get the best bang for your buck, the most car for your money, and we're not going to sell you something that's an issue car.